everybody. Today I want to show you how to do your formative assignment for your monochromatic painting. You are going to be creating a value scale using black and white paint. So if you remember, um, our, one of our elements of art is value, and value means a range of light to dark. So I have some black, I have some white. I'm going to create all the values in between there and make this an even transition between these two hues. Okay, so um, you will need acrylic paint. You will need some sort of a paper for this assignment. The paper quality does not matter because it's just a formative. You're practicing, but it is important that you practice. You will need a pencil. You will need some sort of a brush. I like to use a flat brush because then I can get into my corners of my squares well. You will need a cup of water and a paper towel or some sort of a towel to clean and dry your brush. I went ahead and already drawn my value scale so that you don't have to wait for me. Um, but I just want to show you how I'm doing it. So I just use, you will need some sort of a ruler or a straight edge. I just use the, the width, the skinny width of the ruler to create my value scale. So I drew two lines to measure that. I'm just going to make them a little bit darker so that you can see them better. Okay. There's no measuring involved in this. All I care about is that you're practicing and you have a wide range of value. Then I simply just turn my ruler and measure or mark the width of the ruler all the way down. You can see that I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I would like you to shoot between for in between nine and ten value squares. I have a little extra over here, so I may just make that a black or a white is what it's going to end up being. So I may just do that because there's no mixing involved. Okay, when you are done with this, you're going to take a picture of it and upload it to your, our classroom Padlet so that I can see your progress on your monochromatic unit. All right, so here we go. I like to start with white first simply because it is easier to make a color darker just by adding a little bit of black than it is to make a color lighter. So we would have to add a whole ton of white to black to make that black lighter. Um, but I just have to add a little bit of black to my white to make it darker. So you should always start with the lighter color first. So that's what I'm going to do. I first want to make sure that I have um, a white spot. So I'm going to do this one up here for white simply because I don't have to mix it. I'll just use it. And then I'm just going to scoop some of that white over. And I'm going to add a little bit of black to it. So I'm just going to dip my brush into there and just add a little bit of black. And you can see that a little bit of black goes a really long way. I actually think I need more white in this, so I'm just gonna do that. Add some more white to it until I get a value that is almost white, the lightest gray I could possibly make. And you can see just that little bit of black made that white get really dark really fast. So I'm just going to keep adding to it. And don't worry about having too much paint because you're just going to stretch this paint over and keep using it. Um, when I was in college, I had to make a value scale of 30 different shades. So I know that this is possible for you to do. So the light is great. And you can see that I'm almost creating a value scale on its own. So I'm just going to keep that in mind that I'm just pulling over a little bit of that gray into that white. And I'm almost creating different shades as I'm going here. And that's a good thing. That's a good thing. When, when you become more comfortable with creating a, different values of color, you will be able to do this just naturally, kind of how I just did there. So I'm just going to fill this in. The quality of the painting doesn't really matter. I just need to see the values. And you'll notice that um, in my camera, you can't really see what's happening, but you'll eventually see a nice transition. Okay, so now I need to make it a little bit darker. I've already done that, but just we'll make it a little bit darker here. Just a little bit of black at a time to make that value darker. The goal is not to have a big jump. So if you look here, it's very apparent that I have a big jump. So I am going to go back 
and make it a little bit lighter. Now there's a couple ways you can do this. You can wait for it to dry or you can simply wipe it off right away. This is just a formative and wiping is a technique in painting. A lot of people use it. If you can catch it right away while it is wet, that is fine. So I'm gonna make that value a little bit lighter. And then I'm just going to continue to make those values darker as I step down here. So you'll notice that I'm starting to have a little bit more of a transition into a darker gray. Like I said, I could go for a long time with this. So you're going to see that I transition and I'm probably going to run out of spaces and that's okay. You can always add another row. I would like you to have between nine and 10 squares. So I may have to add another row cause I'm pretty, this is one of my favorite things to do. I could mix colors and create va value scales all day long. It's like calming to me. So I just continue to add black to my gray to make it darker. You can test it next to your colors if you would like. That one has a little bit of a jump to it. That's all right. The goal when you look at your value scale is for you to squint and be able to not see that they're different squares. Okay, so I'm gonna lighten this one up a little bit. Now I had a little bit of water on my brush there so you can see that it kind of came off. So I'm just gonna let that one sit for now. Do my next one. Add a little bit of black to it. Do my next one. And what the heck, I'm just gonna go for it and I'm gonna make another row, okay? So again, just using the width of that ruler and then changing it, the direction of it and using the width of this to create more squares. Now I probably won't need the whole row, but I'm gonna draw it in just in case. I would like you to see how far you can get. If you get past that nine or 10 squares and you have room to do more, keep going, challenge yourself because the more values that you create, the better off you're gonna be in your final product. Okay, so here we go. I'm just gonna turn the corner here. That one still looks similar. And I'm just gonna keep making it a little bit darker each time. And then finally, I think I have a black here. All right, so I ended up with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 values. So like I said, if you wanted to, you could go beyond that nine to 10 and challenge yourself. Once you're done with this, you're gonna take a picture of it and post it to Padlet so I can see that you are able to achieve that learning target and then we'll be able to move on from there. If you need help, let me know. I'm happy to help you, always here for you. Good luck, have fun, enjoy it. I'll see you soon, bye.